height this is now illustrator slash animator slash generic creative and now integrated artificial intelligence to my workflow i don't think i need to introduce the concept at this point you probably already are familiar with what artificial intelligence is but in case you haven't heard about ai image generators yet i would like to expand a little bit on what they are and more specifically of what they are not for this i will use a series of analogies and I would like to draw a disclaimer before I jump into it. Imagine you're reading a novel and you bump into a character description that states she had cheeks red as apples. You're probably picturing a character along the lines of this image or this image or this image. You wouldn't believe that the character will actually be like this because you understand that the analogy cheeks as red as apples doesn't state A equals B, but rather that A has a component that B also has. And even if both components are not exactly equivalent, you understand what the author means. This being said, I want to set the record straight from the start. AI is not alive, is not human, doesn't possess a human experience but it has components in the way it processes things that are very similar to the processes that our biological brains follow in order to process information themselves. I mention this because there is a common misconception going around regarding artificial intelligence image generators being copying machines. And the same way you can use Photoshop to copy an artist's work, erase their signature, uh, pass it through a series of filters and make it pass as your own, the same way you can use artificial intelligence to slightly modify an existing picture that is not yours. But that doesn't mean that the tool was created with this purpose specifically, nor that it's all they do. Imagine the printer. With a printer, you have two main components. You have the machine and you have the ink cartridges. You are not able to print anything if you, have, if you don't have ink to put on the machine. And the same way, you can't process an image with just the cartridge alone. The same way, you have the AI image generator and then the source material database, which is, in most cases, is the Leon database, which was constructed by undiscriminating web scrapping of billions of images from all over the internet without any type of filter whatsoever. So if the image had copyright, if it was medical records, if it was uh, not safe for work, if it was porn, if it was violent, uh, it ended up in the database anyway. This is the reason why many artists and people in general are saying that this database is unethical uh, from the very from its very conception because there is a lot of material in there that shouldn't be there and they pass this judgment directly to the AI image generator models themselves. If you find out that your printer uses ink that was sourced in an unethical way, what would you do about it? You can destroy your printer and try to force a printer company to close, which is a rule that I see some artists are advocating for, but you could also make your own ink cartridges, come to your print company with your concerns about uh, the source of their ink and maybe uh, prompt them to change ink providers or dive deeper into the constitution of your ink and find out more about the ethics surrounding it. Now, how does the ink work in this case? What did the Leon database bots do exactly? There is a common misconception out there and this is how it usually goes. This is Stilo. He is tasked to visit a museum and get data, so he visits every exhibition takes a picture and stories it. Then he is requested to recreate an image in the style of HR Giger. So he pulls out Giger images from his database, makes a collage of them and amazes his pattern with the result. This is the most popular conception about artists that I have seen so far. The problem is still O doesn't exist. 
what we have instead is Lerner. When Lerner goes to the museum, he does not storage anything in there. Instead, he takes a notebook with him, takes a look at each painting and writes down the most iconic characteristic of each. The more paintings he analyzes from H.R. Giger, by example, the more he understands what makes his style distinctive, and when he is tasked to recreate an image on that style, he is able to create something new by following his notes. No collage involved. This is harder to achieve the less popular the artist is, because Learn O has a very vague idea of what direction to follow, given he didn't study enough images to know what parameters make said artist's style distinctive. As we can witness in this paper where they took the most popular artists in the Leon database, got no problem recreated imagery in their style, but when they regurgitated the result back to clip, only kept a given percentage description accuracy where it should have been 100%, given it is, in theory, recreating that style from that artist. However, learn oh, probably of something in the mix that made the recreated image not as distinctive. So, if you are not in the top 1000 artists in the Leon database, it would be pretty hard for the image models to create something that can pass as an image of yours, even if someone requests your style directly. This is just regarding to the text-to-image process inside the artificial intelligence image generators. The models also have a feature named image to image where you can add a source and the model will recreate imagery based on it. This is a method that people who plagiarize use the most, and ironically, it is also the method that can take you away from copyrightless lens if you happen to source your own material. Now, some people might argue that even if you are sourcing the models your own sketches, the end result is still unethical because the result images are still being composed using the Leon data filled with non-consensual copyright imagery. In my opinion, this argument kind of changes once we learn that Stilo doesn't exist and Lerno is doing something entirely different. But let's assume it holds. Do you like coffee? Nothing like the smell of coffee to start the day, am I right? Well, do you like drinking cockroaches? Here comes a grim statistic. There is a percentage of your coffee that is composed by roaches. Yep, you heard it right. Turns out industrial coffee grinders, regardless hygienic measures, end up with roaches and all kinds of insects among their grains, and they end up in the mix somehow. Some safety measures have been imposed of certain percentage of other content to be in the coffee mix for it to be considered safe for human consumption. So there is a high chance you are drinking tiny bits of roaches in your morning coffee. Enjoy. After being delivered this information, you have two choices. Quit drinking coffee forever or shrug it off and go your merry. We are all stardust anyway. As a member of Team Stardust, let me tie this analogy with the Leon database situation. While there are indeed artists copyrighted work in the mix, the percentage of this is incredibly small compared to the bulk of imagery that constitutes the whole of the database. Sure, you can see these numbers and say, holy cow, that's a lot. And it is a lot, but it is like comparing the sun with this little guy over here. Is the sun incredibly large? Yes, but once you get a sense of scale, you will realize the odds of asking the database for the sun specifically are not precisely high. So after knowing the models don't steal data, but rather learn patterns using weights, and the copyright data coming from artists are really tiny percentage of the database you can only pull out if you are deliberate about it, you might feel positive that you might land in a relatively safe zone. Now, how can you further ensure that you are not making 
and your ethical use of the tool. Well, here's what I suggest. Point number one, provide the AI with your own source material. Either train it with your images or fitted initial sketches using the image to image feature. Point number two, don't request for specific artist styles in your prompts. I know you need to be very specific in order not to get weird, ugly results, but there are generic concepts to improve your outputs which you can use instead, like Octane Render, HD4K, Cinematic Lighting, Professional Concept Art, etc. You can check the forums on different social media channels and lurk in the comments for images that are close to the results you want and check the prompts they use to achieve it. Point number three, don't settle for the result that the artificial intelligence gives you straight as it is as your final product. You can generate several output variations, take them all to Photoshop and collage them all into the ultimate post image, which you can also color correct and enhance further. Point number four, are directed from the start. Someone said once that artificial intelligence is like a slave genie you can command to do everything for you, so you don't have to move a finger. I'll say it is more like a Salvador Dali type genius, where you can ask it to do whatever you want and it will do as it pleases, in a take it or leave it fashion. You either learn how to talk to it right or you will get stuck with whatever it wants to give you. And that's it. AI is great for great imagery with loose requirements, but once you need for it to be specific, the results are quite disappointing. Unless you break the image into smaller tasks. In this example, if I prompt a stable diffusion to give me a red reading hood image with a white wolf in a forest, it is too specific for it to give me something nice, but if I separate the elements and then collage them together in Photoshop, I have a better approach to a specific image, and it's more my creation than that of the AI. Point number five, consider other applications. By example, I use ChatGPT for my animated loop of my goods for art. I have a computer with no access to Wi-Fi and a cell phone with a limited mobile plan, so I couldn't really browse the net to find footage of clouds moving or an eclipse, even less unloading it, assuming I could actually find the right footage for my needs. So, I told ChatGPT, hi, I want to create a loopable video of clothes moving from left to right in After Effects, only using the menus and the effects built inside the program. How do I do it? And GPT-4 provided me with a set of instructions that helped me create exactly what I needed. Rinse and repeat for the Eclipse animation, so yeah. If you have a request that is specific enough for you to find anything useful, quickly by researching for it yourself, AI can come in super handy as a pocket professor of sorts. So yeah, while the emerging technologies come with concerning changes and downsides that should be regulated, not all about it is bad and there are ways for us to integrate those technologies in our lives without affecting others. I believe in the key is not in banning the tech altogether but in reviewing the current copyright laws and add extra chapters that penalize people who want to make a quick buck mimicking artists in a non-consensual way, or studios that hire you for a set period of time and then fire you to train a model with the art you did for them. Maybe we could implement a system that works similarly to what the Grimes proposed, with her music, where she allows people to create music in her style as long as they go 50-50 on the earnings. This way, maybe you can be hired by a studio for a separate of time, they can train a model on your style, and continue generating imagery without you being involved anymore in the creation, but get, is still getting paid for each generated image anyway. I mean, maybe you are not receiving your full rate anymore, but you will be paid without having to lift a finger. So it, it, a sort of a, a passive income of sorts. And this while the studio will save money by reducing costs. Anyway, let me know what you think. If you have extra info that I haven't considered so far, feel free to let me know in the comments. 
Thank you for watching and have a fantastic day.